few years since Dr. Spock published his book, Back Before I Was Born, some new parenting expert with some new philosophy comes on the scene to tell people how to go about raising their kids. Right now, the big deal is all about this some gentle parenting thing, right? But in 1997, when our daughter Emily was born, there were two experts kind of duking it out for America's bedtime. There was Dr. Sears. He advocated something called attachment parenting. It involved like putting the children's needs first and stuff like that. And also he advocated something about a family bed, but certainly that was never gonna be an option. And then there was this guy named Dr. Ferber. And Dr. Ferber advocated something called cry it out. And in 1997, on the Upper East Side, a choice had to be made. This was like the red and blue of parenting on the Upper East Side. And all I really knew was we weren't going to do a family bed, obviously, because I'm not crazy. But this Dr. Ferber thing sounded really mean. Like I would hear horror stories about people's children crying for hours on end. And plus, my in-laws seemed to think that was the way to go, and that was enough for me to make a decision, so Dr. <laughs> Sears <laughs> it was going to be. And besides, I figured, how hard can this really be? Like, Emily was a pretty good sleeper. Every night, we would put her to bed in her crib, and she would sleep. We'd put her to bed at seven songs and books, and she'd sleep until like seven the next morning and Andrew would go off to work and Emily and I would go to the 92nd Street Y and she would spend a couple hours at the daycare and I would go exercise and have a sauna and a shower and we'd come home and she'd have lunch and take a two hour nap and then we'd play when Andrew got home and dinner and books and songs and do it all over again and it was great until we got her a bed. The first night in the bed, it was fine. We were like, you have a big girl bed, you're a big girl now, same songs, same books, and she went to sleep, and in the morning she got up and it was great. Second night, it's like she looks around and goes, this thing ain't got no bars on it, I'm free. And we're watching TV in the living room and all of a sudden, there she is. <laughs> and we walk her back to her bed. And she walks back to the living room. And we walk her back to the bed. And she walk and this goes on for hours. <laughs> until finally she's tired. She falls asleep. We go to sleep. We get up the next morning. Day number three, we have a plan. We get new blues clues sheets for the bed, and we get her these pajamas, these green striped pajamas, so now she's Steve in the Blue's Blue's bed, right? And we, she can't read yet, but we put signs on the walls with the bedtime rules. Rule number one, get in bed. Rule number two, stay in bed. <laughs> rule number three, close your eyes. Rule number four, wait to fall asleep. And we put her in bed. And she comes out. And we walk her back. And she comes out. And we walk her back. And she comes out. Now, the thing you need to know is, I am not a night person. I'm a morning person. Like, if you ever hear that I overthrew the government, I promise those plans happened between like 5 and 7 a.m. And I am desperate to go to sleep at this point. And finally, she falls asleep, and I get in my bed with Andrew, and we fall asleep. And sometime in the middle of the night, I have some kind of sense, and I open my eyes, and there next to the bed, staring at me, is Emily in her blues, blues pajamas. And this is when I make my mistake. Because I say to her, I, all I want is to sleep. Like, I would have bought the kid a pony if that's what it took. And I say to her, it's OK, sweetheart. Just this one time, no. climb, just this one time, climb up here with mommy. No. And my little toddler gets in bed, and I wrap my arms around her with Andrew on one side and Emily on the other, and she goes to sleep. 
And I think it's just gonna be that once, I really think that, but no. That kid is just in and out of the bed all the time, all the time. I get pregnant again, we move to Connecticut, we have Jonah. Jonah is an awesome sleeper. We put him in the crib every night at like seven o'clock and he sleeps 12 hours. Emily occasionally sleeps in her own bed. A lot of times she's in my bed. We have that gate now because we have stairs at the top of the stairs. And finally, it's time for Jonah to get a big boy bed. And this time on night one, we get it right. And on night one, we do the Blue's Clues sheets and the, the pajamas and the songs and the books and the signs on the wall. And that first night, it works. And we think like we have totally dodged a bullet, right? This kid, this one is going to sleep in its bed the first night. The second night, we put him in his bed and he looks around and he goes, well, this thing ain't got no bars on it. <laughs> And Emily, thank God, she's sleeping in her own bed. And Jonah gets out of bed, and now he's standing at the gate at the top of the stairs, and he's crying and he's screaming while we're down in the family room. And he wakes his sister, and we come upstairs, and Andrew goes into Jonah's room, and he goes to put Jonah to sleep in his bed. Emily, meanwhile, is like, I sleep in your bed. And she's down the hall with me in our bed, and I'm trying to fall asleep. And again, I'm like, holy shit, these two little tyrants. I, I once said to my friend Alan, I said, this whole interrupted sleep thing, it's like being tortured. He goes, they're not even allowed to do that to prisoners. This is just for parents. And so we've got, we've got Jonah down here with Andrew. We've got Emily over here with me. Andrew falls asleep in Jonah's bed. Jonah's like, well, I'm not sleeping. And he comes down the hall to where Emily and I are in our bed. And having learned absolutely nothing, I say, OK, sweetheart, just this one time, climb in here with mommy and Emmy. So now everybody's going to sleep. All the monkeys are in beds. Nobody's where they belong except me. I don't, I don't move. Everybody's someplace, but everybody's sleeping. And the thing is, it goes on like this for a long time. Like, it is an absolute circus of beds in my house for years, and not like in the good way, not the sexy <laughs> way. It's just an absolute like who knows who's gonna sleep where. Could be anything, any night. But everybody sleeps, and everybody grows up, and everybody ends up sleeping in their own beds eventually. They all do. And now, they're grown, they're gone. Jonah's 22, he's off at college. Emily's 26, she's fully launched. But once in a while, they're home. They come for a visit. And somebody will look at me and say, can I go, in the middle of the day they do this, they'll say to me, can I go watch TV in your room? And I know perfectly well what this means. It is true that my room has a really big TV and I don't yeah. like it that way. It is also true that we have a really comfy bed with fancy sheets and a down comforter. And I also know that half an hour after I get that request to watch TV in my bed, I'll go upstairs and I will find one of my babies snuggled under the covers in the family bed, exactly where they belong. Thank you.